What's going on, people? My name is Mo, friend of the neighborhood music head. And today, I normally go into videos just trying to focus in on a topic, teach you guys something you might not have known before. But today is just going to be a lot of uh, thoughts that I have recently, just trying to show you guys where my thought process is on such a harrowing day. Um, today's February 19th, for those of you who don't know. Um, so just try to follow me here. So lately, I've been depressed. Most people deal with depression, so it's probably not anything crazy for a lot of you people. And when I'm depressed, I like to retreat to music. So I, I like to call it like comfort food in a sense. So like I go to certain artists as my comfort food. They're the people who I can listen to and no matter what mood I'm in, their music will essentially shape what my the rest of my day is going to be like in a sense like for that hour i'm in a different world so to speak and some of those artists on that list of comfort food are like uh tyler creator's cherry bomb or die lit from playboy cardi or uh red teenage melody from night lavelle uh noir from smino i mean the list goes on and a person who has just been added to that list as of very recently was pop smoke now his album came out just two weeks ago. Love it, top to bottom. I just recently got into his music. Him and DaBaby have been criticized very recently. A lot, for that matter. Just about them making the same song over and over. I don't care. Like, damn it, it's good, okay? DaBaby's music is great, and Pop Smoke's is definitely great. I think Pop Smoke has this energy in his voice, this rugged delivery and to complement that with such aggressive bass patterns from whoever that glorious engineer is his music's great and i love it and as of very recently when i'm in these moments of needing something to pull me out of this depression i've been running to pop smoke lately so today wasn't feeling that good and i'm a commuter on a campus in college so I naturally turned on some Meet the Woo 2 and drove to school. It was great. Got, I think I got to, up to dreaming before I ended up having to get out of the car. Um, like humming the song as I'm on my way to class. I sit down in class and the first thing I see on my phone is Pop Smoke has unfortunately passed away. And, you know... You know, when other rappers have died in the past few years now, they hit me bad for especially the people that I'm a very big supporter of. But this especially, the fact that I was just listening to his music, that I was just thinking in my head, oh, I got to show his music to a couple of my friends because they really got to understand how like much of a mood you can be thrown into. Like, I was just thinking about, oh, when's his next show? I think he's coming to my city pretty soon. And to just have this thrown upon me, just me personally, I haven't, it, it sucks. It hurts. Like, the fact that he's only 20 years old, was only 20 years old, my age. He was born just two months after me. I look at him as, you know, a lot of these people nowadays, but especially him because he was so close in age, the fact that you're so young making music that's so unconventional and you're doing it so well. He essentially helped morph this whole Brooklyn sound right now. And I've been looking at him as like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. You know, the idea of me making music has always been something I've dabbled with. And looking at people like him is like, wow, look at that. And to have that potential just snatched up from under you, it kills me. I... There's no way that I can try to articulate this in a tweet or an Instagram post. So I'm trying to make this video now. And like I look at Mac Miller and I, for people close to me know that I was a Mac Miller fanatic. I had tickets to finally go see him live for the swimming tour. And just I think a month and a half prior to his NYC show, he ended up passing away and it hurt especially not only because I had so much of an emotional t attachment to his music, but the first time I listened to Swimming, I listened to that and thought back 
all the way to when Kids was made when he was in high school. And to see that progression, I look at it as if you're making this now after all these years, like I can't even imagine what your music is going to be like five to ten years from now. And so to have that thought and only a few months later have that just ripped to shreds killed me. And it still hurts to this day. I mean, the Circles album that just came out recently, I can barely listen to it because there are certain songs that I still cry to now. I mean, I look at Nipsey Hussle, who had hit such a peak with Victory Lap. I, at first when I was listening to it, I wasn't very familiar with his music. I won't even try to act like I was a day one fan. But maybe a couple months prior to his untimely demise, I looked at that album as, wow, not only is this Grammy nominated, but it's there's so much anthemic hip hop production and just mantras throughout that whole album that I was looking at it as, wow, you're making this at this point in your career. Like, I can't wait to see what you're going to be making a couple of years from now. And just like that, gone. And of course, that still weighs heavy on me. And I mean, even Juice World, the fact that he was able to galvanize such a large demographic of these teenagers and early 20-year-old people who very desperately needed something to identify with when it came to their mental health. He tapped into this audience that just needed to be heard. And I bring these gentlemen up because not only did Pop Smoke have such great potential like these men had, but... They all passed away within just a three-year span. You know, and that's not even naming the Frito Santanas or the Lexia Jais or the Lil Peeps of the world who have also had their untimely passing for a variety of different reasons. But the fact that they had such a future, the fact that they had such a dedicated fan base, and now all of that, all we have to deal with now is hurt. I'm just at a loss right now for just why this keeps on happening. Why us fans have to keep hurting so often. I mean, TMZ tweets are like PTSD triggers for me at this point. Because I look at those pop up on my timeline. It happened with Mac Miller and Nipsey Hussle and Juice World, where I'm scrolling through my timeline and I see those tweets. I look at those now as, who's gone now? What inspirational figure is gone now and reported so quickly that not even their families are able to see it before we're able to see it? And I look at the labels at a time like this. I see them, and this is probably not the best time to bring this up, but damn it, there needs to be a conversation about the fact that these labels are signing these gang-affiliated artists, bringing them onto their teams, not giving them any type of security or protection, only for them to end up dead or in jail, only for the labels to then reap all the benefits of this newfound streaming money from all of their fans. You could look at YNW Melly. Kodak Black, 6 9 the fact that they're in prison right now and when they enter prison, their streaming numbers quadruple and the labels are the one who are holding on to that money. I hate to bring them up, but Tentacion, the fact that Empire Records is still putting out these voice memos and demos, throwing a bunch of features on there and selling it just as this off-putting nostalgia for these fans who will still continue to eat up whatever content that they can have for this person that they've been grieving for almost years now. Pop Smoke streaming numbers are bound to go up astronomically now. And now the ball is in Republic Records' court to handle that money properly. Whether they choose to put that money into a foundation in Pop Smoke's name or give the money to a, the beneficiaries that he had, because not all of that newfound money should be going to a record label that didn't provide this man security and give him the guidance that could have potentially have led to avoiding this terrible situation. I'm just hurt at the moment. I won't even try to front. It's, it's been hard. And, you know, this is only hours out of the news even being broken. But I don't know. To I don't even know if I'm going to be posting this. Most of my friends don't even care about situations like this where an artist passes away that they didn't really care about. And so I'm making this video really just as a therapy for my own sake. So I don't even know if I'm going to be posting this. But if I do end up posting it, the if anybody's even watching the who are Pop Smoke fans, just know that it's okay to grieve. It's okay to feel sad right now. 
you shouldn't be limited to grieving somebody that you knew. If he affected you in any way, if his music affected you in any way, if you identified with anything in his situation, you have the right to be sad. Don't try to let anybody on social media try to say, oh, you, you weren't even close to him. Why are you caring about somebody who you didn't have any contact with? It's all right, man. I don't even know how to close this thing out. So, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later, man. Peace.